Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Ricksty Minutes. It's me. I'm, I'm best. I'm best. And we got Didge. I don't give a fuck, bitch. Doing the show the only way that you should, mm -hmm. which is under the influence of alcohol. <laughs> good, good. I'm, I'm keeping it sober. I'm keeping a clean cut over here. Because uh, that's, that's just the kind of fucking dude I am. What can I say? Yeah. So what would you think of this episode here, Digi? Um... It's all right. I like the mm -hmm. concept, mm -hmm. and there were a couple of lines of dialogue that were rewarding to me on a meta level, mm -hmm. more so than perhaps much of the episode. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I feel like, while I like this as an episode idea, mm -hmm. it's weird that they framed this as a replacement for Dimensional Cable. Because I don't think it was really that similar. Maybe they just did that to assure us that they weren't going to do one this season. But I like, I suppose so. Because uh, I was expecting, because in, in season two when they did it, Rick did a fourth wall break and said like mm -hmm. we're doing it again because everyone loved it last time. Right, right. Um, I didn't think they'd do it a third time because a they've done it twice already, and b the response to the second one was not nearly as favorable as the original. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um. So I was thinking that if like if they address it at all, there will be another fourth wall break, and we got that at the start of the episode. <laughs> right. And that was really gratifying for me on a meta level. Yeah. The fact that Rick said, We're doing this instead of dimensional cable, and I went, Oh, like, of course. But then um I think that accidentally set me up to expect it to be anything like dimensional cable, which it's really yeah. not. Yeah. Yep, instead of, like, crazy vignettes where they, uh, I don't know, like, they just spitball lines and then animate around them in a very, a very appealing, uh, aesthetic kind of way. Like, with, uh, yeah. what were the, what were the, the uh, two, bl two brothers and <laughs> shit? Two the... bro it's just <laughs> called Two Brothers. Yes. Yeah. Like, that's, that's classic shit. That, everybody loves that. And this was just, this was just, like, a bunch of mini Rick and Morty adventures just smashed into one thing. And they were all new. They were all yeah. original. Uh, that, they were cool. But... Yeah, like, I come away a, a, a bit lukewarm. You know, it's a bunch of uh, episodes that, that were, like, decent, you know? They, well, they, they, that's even yeah. selling it short. They, they were they were good. Some of them were, like, quite interesting <coughs> and quite funny. But in the end, we're just left with a bunch of, like, shallow experiences that were kind of, like, cheap fun. Yeah, and mm -hmm. but the weird thing about it is that they're not going... This felt more like a story episode to me. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. with the Dimensional Cable, and granted, the first, the first Dimensional Cable did have one of the most gripping narrative moments in the show. That's the one with, with Jerry... The, what uh, was going on with the family. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, but the dimensional cable itself is like a totally ridiculous, unscripted, goofy shit. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason the second one wasn't as well received was that um, both stories were... Like, the dimensional cable itself was the same as before. It's just a bunch of, like, retarded yep, bullshit yep. that's hilarious. Mm -hmm. But then the B-plot was also really dumb. Mm -hmm. And so it mm -hmm. didn't have the impact the original episode had. This one, though... If they had never mentioned Dimensional Cable, this would have just seemed like an episode of Rick and Morty. Mm -hmm. Like, the point is the, this idea that Rick has been taking all these memories from Morty, some of them by Morty's request, and some of them because Rick got rid of them on purpose yeah, for his yeah. own reasons, usually which are hilariously petty. Like, <laughs> yeah, probably my favorite memory is the one where Rick uh, just says a word wrong. And it says uh, Morty... taking for granted, taking for granted, yeah. everybody. Yeah. yeah As up. opposed to taking for granted. And Morty calls, uh, calls him out on it. And he erased that memory from Morty's <laughs> mind. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. also one where Morty beat him at checkers. Yeah. I remember <laughs> that one. <laughs> <laughs> while he was like drunk that's like it, yeah. he wasn't even probably trying and he still mm -hmm. erased that memory well you know i'd be interested to know sort of the creation process for this episode because later on like rick re repeatedly says several times like yo D morty you stop thinking of this as like a lesson learning thing stop thinking of this as like a normal like narrative episode this is a vignette episode stop taking it so yeah. seriously like he was quite clear to to make that point but it manifests like, the, the resulting we uh, we get of, like, these bunch of episodes of, you know, like, these micro-episodes are, they're good, but they're less, like, out there and wacky and fun than, like, the crazy shit you yeah. saw on Interdimensional Cable. Mm -hmm. That's well, that's the thing. Like, they're less weird than, like, a normal Rick and Morty episode a lot of the time. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's just Even though these are the ones that about... are supposed to, like, drive him literally insane. That's what we were, like, yeah. promised at the beginning, and they did not really I deliver mean, that. I mean, usually... 
usually it's just that Morty accidentally got someone killed in some kind of horrific way, and that's why he had the memory erased. Yeah. And while those stories are are funny and 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 fun, like they're not so weird that it doesn't feel like a normal episode of Rick and Morty. Right. Um, right. But I think. Here's the other line that was deeply satisfying to me on a meta level, Mm -hmm. which is where at the very end of the episode, when um, Rick and Morty are both calling Summer a bitch for no reason, Mm -hmm. she says, no wonder you're arguing constantly and always behind schedule. And they're like, what'd you say? And she's like, nothing. And I was like, ah, there we go. That's why this episode happened. Mm -hmm. Because... Justin Roiland wanted to do another interdimensional cable and some more unscripted bullshit, and Dan Harmon wants the show to be a serious, <laughs> um, you know, yeah, drama show. Yeah. Which, because, like, if you go back to the original episode, Dan Harmon wrote the, like, the, the, the half of the episode that was a completely serious story that was heart-wrenching mm-hmm. was written by Dan Harmon, and the other half was Justin Roiland doing improv in a booth. Yeah, okay. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that maybe, you know, there was disagreement about how the second one had gone, where maybe... Now, I haven't listened to the commentaries on season two yet, mm-hmm. which I've been meaning to do this whole fucking time and I've never gotten around to, but, um, you one know, day. I should. And then I want to hear the commentaries on this season, because I've kind of followed the production background of Rick and Morty a bit, not only through read- having, you know, listened to the commentaries, but also... When season two was airing, and I don't know if any of this has happened for season three, I haven't paid enough attention, Mm -hmm. but when season two was airing, um, for the first episode and the last episode, uh, Justin Roiland, like, periscoped and (laughs) live-streamed the parties that they threw. I remember that, yeah. Yeah. And during those was... During the first one was one of the most fascinating things I've ever watched in my life, mm-hmm. specifically because of the fact that half of their people were being poached actively at the time. Right. Like right. they were talking about how their lead guy, their like their 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 lead writer for that season had just been poached by Disney, and Justin Roiland was saying like if the show goes downhill next season, it's because we lost this guy. And mm-hmm. he mm-hmm. said things like. Um, you know, everyone was saying that, like, because Justin does so much on the show is why it takes so long to come out. And, like, just not having enough talent on the show is why it's always behind schedule and why, um, you know, and, like, because the talent that is there gets poached by better networks who can pay yeah, them more, yeah. you know. Um, and so they all leave. So no one stays on the show for long enough. So, like, if Rick and Morty were to go downhill, it would be because they couldn't spend two years letting Justin and Dan do everything on the show, you know? Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Now, obviously, the season's been pretty great, so they've they found... They, they must have found someone. They, they strapped some shit together. Yeah, they're working yeah. out so far. But, like, hearing them mention the idea that, like, oh, you two argue constantly are, are behind schedule, and the fact that it was directed at Rick and Morty, like, themselves, mm-hmm. like, because if it had been directed at more characters, I'd assume the whole cast or everyone involved is always arguing. But, like, framing it that way made it, like, th- Justin and Dan are arguing all the time and always behind schedule. And, like, it's easy of to course. imagine. That's exactly both what fucking, it comes off as. Yeah. They're both insane people. Like, just in the last episode of this podcast, I was talking about how Dan Harmon is known for being impossible to work with and right, a total right. piece of shit. And Justin Roiland's fucking crazy. This is a guy who last year uh, just leaked... All this, like, <laughs> information about a show he was trying to, like, he was working with Fox on. Uh-huh. I don't know if this has been canceled by now or if it's just, uh, you know, I don't know how far along it ever was. But he just, like, leaks all this information about his own show that he had okay, been selling cool. to Fox. Okay, cool. This is news to me, but all right. <laughs> it was, it, he, he got really shit. Why would you really do shit, that? What was the point of that? He got shit-faced and leaked all this info. Oh, and he okay. was, he, he posted, <laughs> he posted the text logs he was having with, like, the, like, the, the lead writer on the, the show, fuck? with the guy was, or producer, yeah. who was telling him, like, what the fuck are you doing? And he was screaming all caps <laughs> at the guy, this is new media, you motherfucker. Like, what stop living fuck? in the past. <laughs> We're in the future now. Like Twitter is the future. Like you can't hide shit behind corporate backgrounds and stuff like that. Like he's just out. Like he's doing what I would do. Yeah, basically. Yeah, he's but he's doing it while trying to you know. make a pitch to Fox or whatever. So like, not... I think they already owned the show. Like, okay, okay. Like it was a show that's in 
pre-production that may or may not okay come it's just like exist. oh look at me i'm such a rebel while i work for a yeah. giant corporation making their cartoon like uh, it seems right. like a double stand but okay whatever <laughs> that's fine i think well i think he saw it as a as a promotional thing like okay let's oh, I, promote I see, I this see. show mm -hmm. in a very modern way by releasing all this just information and everything. just being yeah. transparent about it yeah okay which is how okay. i think you know that makes um, more sense but but the point is that Justin Roiland doesn't play by the rules, mm -hmm. and he's insane. Um, you know, he kind of comes from the internet. He's originally an internet guy. Like, he's from Hollywood, but he's from the Hollywood internet, you know? What even, what so even is that? What is the Hollywood internet? Like, what sort of things do Hollywood internet people do? Have you ever heard of uh, Channel 101? I, I am aware of the Channel 101 Because that's, that's where Rick and Morty comes from. Right. The original short was on there. But Channel 101, like, was supposed to be... The idea of it was that it was, like, people who work in TV. Like, it was people who were, like, mm -hmm, sick of mm -hmm. the restrictions of what TV made them do. I see. And so they went and made this other place where they could they could break copyright law without getting punished. They could, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. like, basically do whatever the fuck they want. It was, like, a guerrilla filmmaking thing. But, like, everyone involved with it was people who, like, Dan Harmon was involved with Ch Channel 101. Like, these were all people who worked in TV mm -hmm. but were, like, looking for an escape on the internet. Um, it just didn't blow up that big. The only show that I think anybody really knows is Yacht Rock and Cautionary Tales of Swords, which are oh, both amazing. Of course, amazing. of course. <laughs> um, but that's why those shows have a little bit more production than the average YouTube show, because like it was a channel they were trying to launch online, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, which Dan Harmon tried to do recently, like his show Harmon Town, um, which was the uh, Dungeons and Dragons show. Do you know about that? Oh, th that's right. I I know of it in general. Yeah. I haven't seen any of it. Yeah, they just animated like over a dun uh, like uh, they played D and D live in front of an audience and then animated the campaign. Mm -hmm. um, it's all right. It sounded uh, like Harman a terrible Quest, idea. Not Harman Town. Good, okay, nobody it, understands that D and D is the most boring thing in the fucking world if you're not actually but, playing. But it. it's and even it's that all it's comedians, barely even though. fun. Well, okay, if they know what they're doing, it's it, uh, it's I, all right. Is this that show that fun. you see the fucking trailers for on on like YouTube ads and shit all the time? Because it looks like the worst thing ever. It Are looks you implying that I watch YouTube ads? Uh, well, well, I, I mean, you, I skip them as much as possible, I don't but know. I they, see the they, on but mobile and All shit. I know about it is that it was on this new, like, yeah, Dan Harmon yeah, okay. and a bunch of other people tried to create, like, their own Hulu, like, a subscription service to mm -hmm. watch, like, specific shows. But it, it, w it went as well as Tidal did. Right. You're trying to do the same thing, which is you can't take people away from the websites they want to use mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and make them pay to watch content that they don't even know what it is, you know? Yep. Yep, like, I hear you. no one's going to download titles so they can hear the new Kanye West album if they haven't already heard it and confirmed they liked it. Mm -hmm. And they just want to pay for it normally. Um, <laughs> but anyways, uh, like, there's a reason I didn't buy 444, Jay-Z. I downloaded that shit because can't buy it anywhere. It's only on fucking title. Yeah, who's going to do that? Not me. Well, not that it matters to him. He has all the money. In, the in any but, yeah. case, um, okay, so that's all cool. But I, I just did want to say about all that whole point basically tied into that meta comment that Summer makes at the end of this episode yeah. here. And okay, so like, yes, that that is the lampshade hanging sort of explain, you know, it, it, possibly as you just placed it forward, uh, explaining like yeah. why this episode seems to be disjointed and have like a, a half that's, you know, story based that doesn't really go anywhere. And then the other free form thing that also feels kind of awkward. Uh, so, yeah. okay, we've got, we've got this basically explanation, but that doesn't retroactively make the episode more entertaining or like more no. good. It just gives me sort of a sense of satisfaction. Like ah, it is an interesting, it's an interesting thought yes. about like, why this production is why it took season three so long to come out mm -hmm. you know why they released the april 1st episode and it took another three months for the episode right uh, for the right. for the season you know like just the idea that dan and justin fight all the time is entertaining to me because i could easily imagine it you know mm -hmm. like these guys are insane people and um i don't know if that's why the episode itself is like how it is but it would certainly explain why, like, I could easily imagine Justin being like, why not do episode, like, why not do another interdimensional cable? Like, yeah. Why yeah. not? I love it. You know? And Dan being like, oh, we didn't, we didn't go, why, like, like, we gotta make it emotional, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Fucking Dan. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. I, I I almost feel like it's a waste of time to even go into any of the details of the episode. Like, uh, the moon by, thing, by the way, kind of funny, I guess. 
I by the way, I don't laugh. even blame them for that because of the mm-hmm. fact that, like, I loved the second Internet and Channel Cable, but that one did get a lot of flack. Like, I know people who think that episode's bad. I and, like, can't imagine why. Uh, I, I think guess they... Monkey said, I think Monkey's dissed that episode before. Really? But what's his argument? Yeah. That it's just too redundant? It's just the same idea again? I think, I think just because, I mean, the Jerry half of the episode's not that funny. That's true. I'll give them that, but mm. and and the skits aren't as memorable as the first time. I just feel like I could watch an infinite number of those. That's like, what I was going to say. Mm-hmm. They don't all have to be as good as one another. I will watch as many of those as you make because they're fucking hilarious in concept alone. You know, I feel the very same. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, I could see why that episode was pretty <laughs> criticized. So I could see why they would not want to take that route again. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know, man. I got nothing to fucking say about, like, the individual. Like, oh, it was so funny when the worm came out yeah. of Morty's mouth, and they were like, lol, it's poop. That was Just great. pinch it off, dude. You know? Uh, <laughs> okay, that, I, I got a laugh out of that. But then, like, I don't know, like, the joke dragged a little bit, and I was like, okay, yeah. I, I get it. Let's, it let's wrap this thing up. The Moon Man joke dragged. And, like, like the high point of the joke of the Moon Man thing was like a, huh, huh. Okay, I get it. Yeah. It's good. You know, I agree. There was no, there was no real massive peak. Lol, he's jacking the dude off when he thinks he's torturing him. Uh, kind of funny, yeah. but like it's, I don't, yeah, like yeah, the, they weren't that, they, they weren't, weren't that, that funny. funny. They weren't that funny. The funniest line in the episode by far to me is immediately after Rick and Morty accidentally mind wiped themselves, and mm-hmm. uh, after Morty's first memory, he says, "I guess we're kind of like the Men in Black." Yeah. And he asks Rick if he remembers Men in Black, and Rick says, I've only got Men in Black too." And he says, well, then you get the concept. And he goes, well, actually, it's mostly random callbacks to the first movie. And I, <laughs> fucking, I lost it at that joke. Um, a couple more at the end of the episode. All the jokes that really made me laugh weren't even in the memories, except for when when – uh, Morty mm-hmm. beat Rick at checkers, and that made me laugh. That was good. That I, I went back and memory. watched some of those like really fast clip show things that went by. Yeah, like there, there was some. I like when yeah. they can cram. The fast ones were better than the long ones. They, I know they were. They were. But then again, it honestly, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. some of them felt like they were legitimately like rejected ideas from the show. Yeah, yeah. Like, like that they, Moon Man like one they, could have been a full episode if they wanted to be. Or just, like, all of these were just things that they thought of for, like, minor subplots and then didn't do. Mm-hmm. And then they just went, so. like, eh, let's just fill an episode with all of our extra bullshit that we thought was kind of and funny. And, you, you know, the way that you at know? the beginning, like, uh, Rick is like, oh, we're doing a clip show, but they're all new clips. Like, oh, these are these are ideas we threw away, but at least they're new. Here they are, everybody. Yeah. You know, we got them on the table. The way he phrased it made it sound like it was yeah. stuff they'd thrown out. You know, well, you know what? I'm just going to pin this one on the fucking women writers. Those goddamn fucking <laughs> women writers. You can't trust them as far as you can throw them. Why they got to ruin Rick and Morty in every oh, way my, like this? Actually, my favorite scene <laughs> is when um, Morty's going to kill himself and Rick yeah. is like inspired to join him in a suicide pact. I like, do like that. <laughs> that's a, that's just such a Rick moment. Like, that's <laughs> what I love about his character is the idea that he'd be like, you know what? I am down to kill myself. Let's do this, motherfucker, you know? Yeah, I like um, that uh, reckless side. And then Summer coming in just like, oh, you guys are doing this again? I was like, ah, oh, you got me, you motherfuckers. Yeah, we all got cucked. I wanted to see him fucking die. I, I really like this idea that Rick, um, because he's so insanely well-prepared and has so much shit set up mm-hmm. and generally is only kind of afraid of death, we'll just let yeah. these scenarios play out. Like... You know, he he openly says this isn't the first time we've done this. Like, we've <laughs> literally gone down this road before um, just be, like because he can wipe all his memories after it's over, you know? Yep, and, like, yep. the fact that he has setups for even if him and Morty accidentally wipe, like, th- even this has happened before. Even them forgetting it happened has happened before. That's right. That's right. And there's preparations for it. And I, yeah, that's what I love about Rick and yeah. this show. That's good stuff. And, you know, and just the idea of, uh, uh, yeah, like, it makes sense that it just reinforces the whole thing. Like, not only is Rick able to go to infinite realities and, like, just if, yeah. if everyone dies here, he'll just go somewhere else. Everyone's fine. Like, so, he, you know, his detachment has begun at that point. But now even that he's able to just remove memories from himself and anyone else and replace them, it's just another layer of, like, yeah, yeah. like, why would I give a shit about anything? I, like, I can just oh, wipe just nothing, memories. Nothing, ev- nothing matters whatsoever. Yeah, It's exactly. all just entertaining, you know, and... Um, I think this episode was helped for me also by the fact that I actually 
I watched the first 15 minutes and then I had to stop because I had to do other shit. And mm-hmm. then I watched the last five minutes just now. And I really think the last five minutes saved the episode. Like, yeah, okay. I think up till that point, I thought it was okay. And I was like, all right, this is, there's moments in here I like, but some of it's dumb. The very end, I thought, is the best part. Like, just when, when it actually, when it stops being just a clip show and becomes about them, you know, doing the suicide pact and, like, this meta idea that they've been doing this before was way funnier than any of the actual stories they told. That's true. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I was just pretty disappointed overall in terms of uh, the laugh-o-meter. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. The stories were not that good. They really felt cutting room. They didn't feel original and, like... They felt like stuff that wasn't supposed to be in the show. That you watch and go, oh, that should have been cut. Like, I know why you guys didn't put that in the episode, because it wasn't that good, you know? (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. And maybe uh, maybe uh, that's why she was... Maybe that's also part of the reference to them being behind schedule, is, like, uh, they don't have time, so they threw in an episode of, like, you know, half-complete shit. Who knows? Yeah, we'll Um, never know. I can't wait for... It's I cannot wait for the commentaries for this episode, because I think this oh, episode, yeah, yeah. while by itself is not that great, will be far more interesting to hear it talked about than it will be to have watched it. That's a great point. I would love to hear the, the commentary on this episode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. More than any yeah, other that, episode so far this season. Yeah, and I have a very different kind of engagement with this show, I think, than this. You know, this is... I think we should address this, Nate. Hmm. This has been a weirdly controversial podcast a lot of the time. <laughs> On occasion, that's true. <laughs> I think it might just be because, like, people watch this who... May- like, maybe the- there's a lot of people who watch this who just are Rick and Morty fans. Sure. Like, yeah. maybe these episodes get found. I have no idea. Because mm-hmm. they do get pretty high view counts for... Pr- for- View shows on this channel. They get more views than any other thing on this channel. It's true. Yeah, which is really weird. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the comments are often, like, aggressively against us, and they have bigger dislike bars than our normal videos. So I think people come in here just looking for Rick and Morty reviews, mm-hmm. and when we, for instance, on the last episode, went on a seven-minute <laughs> rant about uh, whether or not Dan Harmon is a liberal cuck, yeah. <laughs> we got a lot of flack for that. <laughs> They can fuck off. That's the good shit. That's the good shit. Yeah. No, but that's sometimes it's, I mean, for one thing, like with this episode, the whole time watching the episode, I thought I'm going to have nothing to say about this. Like I Uh wasn't even uh sure if I was going to be able to do a podcast until the meta thing came through and I went, well, I can talk about that for 20 minutes, you know? And that's filled up 90% of the time we've been talking right now. Yeah. Yeah. How worried were you? Uh, I'm never worried. I have developed a level of confidence that can talk for any amount of time about anything. I'll find a way. But, yeah, that, that's you know. that's how I felt. Uh, I was just basically going to reiterate how unfunny. I, I don't want to like oversell how unfunny this was. It was like I did get some chuckles. I got some smiles. There were some goofs in there. Like this the fact like that a, the Moon Man this is like winked. A strong six episode. Yeah, I think around there, you know? around there. Like I, yeah. I actually I watched it twice actually just because I had time while I was editing some Light other seven. shit. And uh, the first time I, I I liked it more the first time because I just let I let it wash over me and just let the memes fall where they may and was like yeah pretty positive. Then the second time yeah, yeah. I'm Im- I'm imagining watching the whole Moon Man section again mm-hmm. and like no it wouldn't be worth it yeah it's not yeah. that funny like the payoff wasn't that good. The idea that he was literally a smudge on the lens doesn't really make sense. It makes with what we he, saw I, in the he he moves he moves yeah. in like the first thing, so like it makes literally no sense. But that was that's kind of what makes it funny that it makes I don't absolutely know if that makes no it sense. Funnier to me, no, I was well, just all like, right. <laughs> oh, he he literally was a smudge on the lens. That's Rick, predictable. Rick and Morty like, really does a good job of basically explaining everything and never contradicting its own logic, and that definitely does contradict its own logic in a way that yeah. one could criticize. I just think that like it's a wash. Like who cares if that like doesn't yeah. make sense in, in this particular case. Uh, but it, you know, yeah. it's a fair criticism. If I was the mysterious Mister Enter, which I am, I would deduct massive points for that t- tragic logical break. <laughs> it would be a, it would be a big There's problem also for stuff, me. Um, probably the most predictable joke in the entire show, and maybe it's fine that mm. it's predictable, is when Rick types in uh, like twisty oh, yes. ties or whatever mm-hmm. uh, uh, into his magnet and gets a bunch of them, which I thought that was really funny. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as it shows Morty typing in, and I went, he's typing in tits. Yeah. And then yeah. a bunch of chicks with huge tits fly into the house, and I went, yep, 
I, you know, like, I think it was less <laughs> funny because I knew exactly because it was obvious. Like, what if it had been anything else, it would have been funnier because I didn't predict it. I mean, but it was exactly what I thought it would be. They're going you know? pretty okay. So I, I noticed that specifically, all those women were also redheaded. So, like, it's clearly, like, a Jessica thing that he was doing at that moment. Um, They're really sure. going hard with the Jessica thing. Like, I, 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 honestly, that kind of, like, is it, it's been annoying me a little bit. Why is Morty so into this one girl? Like, wouldn't he just fuck anyone? It's weird. What's the deal? What's the deal here? I honestly feel it, like it's kind of a feminine perspective here. Like, uh, you know, like, no, as a guy, I'd fuck no. anyone. I'd fuck anyone. What? How I'm, is that a feminine perspective that he is more in love with Jessica. I think it's just that they're taking that direction. You don't think it's, it I seems think... more feminine to be fixated no. on like one person and, and have that no. kind of, cause the men, no. the men sow the field, the men sow the field, the women. I don't think so at all. Whatever, man. You you're you're like denying the existence of sluts right now. Like, what are you fucking we're, talking about? We're having about? the exact debate right now from Eyes Wide Shut between Natalie Portman and I Tom Cruise. I haven't seen Eyes Wide Shut. You should, but that's exactly um, the debate we're having right now. One of my favorite I, movies. Everybody watch it. I highly doubt that that is a- at all involved in the intentions. I think they're trying to make Jessica a more important character because she's going to be relevant. She has been getting more scenes. That's true. Because if you watch, if you go back to season one, mm-hmm. um, Jessica, uh, we m- we mentioned this before that she was kind of a non, like she's just a girl who Morty has a crush on. Yeah. And every once in yeah. a while, they feed you a little idea that maybe she could like him. Mm-hmm. In that classic 80s movie kind of way. Yep. But it's yep. not that important. And, like, in the episode where Morty gets a sex bot, he doesn't seem to give a fuck. And, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> granted, in the last episode, he objectively fucked a bunch of mermaids. He like, sure did. He Morty's sure did. not a virgin. So, like, I think in season one, the idea was more Morty's this dorky virgin and he likes this girl because he's just into her. Yeah. But yeah. at this point, I think it's more that he legitimately finds her more attractive than anyone but, else but and why? is in love with I, her. I've never heard a reason, like, why? Because I think, I think they want to make her a major character. Well, that would explain it, I guess. Even though that that's not really... Uh, she hasn't done anything other than be hot. And he's fucked countless some, mermaid some sluts. People have, some people just have one person there. My fucking brother, Victor, mm-hmm. chased his... The girl he's now dating, he chased for six years because he literally couldn't find anyone else attractive. Oh, boy. We're going to get into serious red pill you territory know? if I go down this road. Let's yeah. let's not dig too deep into that. Uh- <laughs> happens to some people. Happens to people. They they just have a single a single target sexuality. You know? I can't relate. Like, someone, someone is so... Imagine... Okay. Imagine, Nate. Mm-hmm. Like, you've probably never met someone who who just seems absolutely perfect the closest thing like, that i've ever met is this girl in college who was just super hot that's the, that's the yeah. closest i could get but imagine imagine you met a girl who's so perfect like so insanely attuned to everything you've ever thought or wanted mm-hmm. that after meeting her you think there's no way i can ever be happy with anyone else because she's just that perfect like like i've seen the top of the mountain how could I settle for sitting on the side of the mountain? Okay, you know what? You know? Uh, when I when I find myself in a situation like that, here's where my mind goes. Okay, I know for a fact that nobody's perfect, so what's wrong with me that I think this person will complete me? What's wrong? What do I need to fix about myself <laughs> that I need this like addition in my life? That's a good defense mechanism. Yeah, I think for so. For that, I think so. Because it's not a good position to be in if no, they don't you love you back. No, it It leaves you vulnerable. You, know? you can't be doing that. Um, <laughs> 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 Some people, like my brother, get lucky and they eventually do love you back. But that's a rare thing, um, man. It's a rare thing. Yeah, it's a rare thing. Um, but you know, I I get it. Like I get why if someone like if the only thing you find attractive mm-hmm. is like a redhead with tits this size yeah, who's yeah. <laughs> this tall and like everyone else you fuck is second best to that. Like mm-hmm. you fuck some girl who might be a nine out of ten. But is that going to distract you from the 10 out of 10? You know, like, you're always going to yeah. be thinking about the... Especially if it's within grasp. Because Jessica's kind of within grasp. That's true. Like, I'm sure in Morty's mind, he thinks, like, she lives near me. It's not like... It wouldn't be weird if we got together. Uh, you know? You know, I, I feel... Uh, I feel like it's a little bit that they want to have their cake and eat it, too. Uh, that they want Morty to be woke as fuck. And, uh, you know, like, this the increasingly sociopathic guy... 
you know, who's also got yeah. some morals and shit. But then they also want him to be like a naive kid with like this innocent crush. Right. I think they want to have it, it both ways a little bit. I think that's always been the case in this show. Yeah. Like, I yeah. think it's it kind of bothered me in season two mm-hmm. when some episodes Morty was like this hard ass and then other episodes he's a fucking retard. Right. You know? Right. And, um,. I mean that's always the problem when you've got a bunch of writers. That's on the sort show of the the problem of like the differently. the archetype of what of the character that Morty is based on versus like the character yeah. progression throughout the show. You know. Yeah, and I think season three's done a much better job of keeping him consistent. Like, I agree. He's he's felt pretty consistently woke throughout the season. I haven't yeah. really yeah. felt like he was just a naive retard um, much this time. It's just the Jessica but, thing, really. I guess that stands out to me now. I think that's why I that's why I think she's supposed to be a major character. Like, I think there's going to yeah. be some kind of development in that relationship, and that's why they want us to keep us it in mind. And if that's not the case, it will be weird. Like, yeah. why bring her up so much unless you're going to do something about it? Um, I agree. I agree. Because I don't remember her coming up that much in season two. She definitely did not. The most that she ever did was like the most important Jessica has been before this season was like. That episode where he, like, made her fall in love with him, and then she, you know, was just mind-controlled to love him. She was fairly relevant in season one. Like, she's probably mentioned in more than half the episodes of season one, but season two I don't remember being a big deal. But I haven't Mm. rewatched season two. I've seen season one, like, four times, so I'm a bigger expert in that. I forget. Cronenberg is season two, right? No, that's one. Fuck. Okay, I can't keep That's, like, episode six. That's where they killed the family and moved to the other universe. Okay, well, whatever. (laughs) All right, well, good tangent. See, see, that's the kind of quality you get on Rick's Demands. That's that's the good stuff. Yeah, and that's an, an episode stuff. that neither of us had anything to say about mm-hmm. turned into one of the longest episodes of the podcast. Is that true, that's really? How, <laughs> that's how we do. Yeah, normally these are under 30 minutes. Oh, that's cool. Over. There you go. So there you go. Enjoy your various pills of wokeness and uh, uh, <laughs> sleepness. And specifically that, like, you know that shack, like, asleep and then woke with, like, the glowing eyes? Yeah, that's yeah, that's the one. <laughs> that's the one. All right, I've had to piss for 25 minutes. Okay, now. sounds that's good, right, my so. dude. We'll see you guys next week with a new episode. <laughs> Bye-bye. Peace out.